come back to this, uh, to this talk where we present a series of uh, models where we study the, the short and long damages of austerity policy, both in the short and so on the Keynesian dimension and in the long run on the Schumpeterian dimension. Um, well, Alan Kerman talked this morning about uh, the theory that we are supporting this austerity policy, so the work about expansionary austerity, so the confidence theory, as the Kerman was putting it, or the idea of Reinhard Terogov, that there was this 90% pressure in debt over GDP, Unfortunately, there were mistakes in the, in the Excel file, but uh, there was this kind of uh, support for this austerity policy, even if the result has not been very successful. Why? Because if you take the GDP of developed countries, almost everywhere, there are few exceptions, Germany or the US, it remains below the pre-crisis level, and even in the case of Germany and the US, it's still below what should have been the potential one. There are jobless recovery, and at least in Europe, we have this contradiction between, on the one hand, austerity policies for the fiscal compact, and on the other hand, this Euro 2020 strategy that should make Europe the most competitive and innovative country uh, in the world. So here I put a, a, a plot from the paper by Blanchard and co-authors, where you can see the GDP of, uh, uh, of the US and the GDP of the Euro area starting in, uh, in 2000, and from this plot you can see quite clearly that there is this, uh, this comment, uh, the discussion about whether this neg the negative possible effect of the crisis and austerity policy in terms both of hysteresis and the possible idea of uh, uh, secular uh, stagnation. And you can see the GDP of Euro area is quite flat and uh, there is a, an increasing gap with respect to um, the US. So a couple of days ago there was this new uh, paper, this new short paper on the International Monetary Fund about uh, what was called neoli neoliberalism oversold where they were discussing the effect of uh, austerity. Uh, so it was not coming from you know, anti-globalization movement, it was the International Monetary Fund, and the, the point that of this discussion was that this austerity policy, in a way, were reducing the welfare, uh, both by reducing the demand, but also reducing the supply channel, and by increasing the level of inequality, this austerity policy could have an impact also in, uh, in the long term. So also the International Monetary Fund start to talk about this possible problem with austerity policy. Um, in our paper, in our work, we, in a way we, we agree with uh, Alan the fact that all these austerity policies are also there because there are wrong macroeconomic theory underlying them. And in particular, ma most macroeconomic model and theory don't conceive the economy as an evolving complex uh, system. So our idea was to develop a family of uh, uh, agent-based model that could be used to study the joint effort of fiscal, monetary, innovative policy, and so on. Um, let me just give you a brief uh, overview of, uh, of the result. So the first thing that we found is that in the short run, austerity policy has a negative impact on GDP volatility, on unemployment, and the effect of austerity policy are magnified by inequality. At the same time, these policies are self-defeating, that is, they're not even able to stabilize the public budget, and what we found is that this was the, the negative effect of austerity policy can also spill, spill over in the long run. So it can also affect the innovation performance of the economy. Um, here are the papers on which we, we build our results. So we have kind of paper on the Keynes plus and Petro family of model. And let uh, just me go to the, to the model structure that we employ. So it's an agent-based model. So there are many heterogeneous agents, many heterogeneous firms that interact. You have a capital good sector where there are heterogeneous firms that innovate and by innovating they produce heterogeneous machines. These machines are sold to consumption good firms which are heterogeneous and they invest according to some kind of expectation. Um, these consumption good firms need credit to finance their, uh, their choices so there is a link between the consumption goods firm and the banks and the financial uh, uh, sector in the market. You have this heterogeneous bank, and which in, in principle can also fail, so you can have a banking crisis, and you have a very highly stylized government sector that fixes unemployment subsidy, fixes the tax rate, and there is a central bank which fixes the, uh, the interest rate. Um, so let me just give you the idea of what happens every time step. So there is the bank that fixes the amount of credit, capital good firm invest in innovation, consumption good firm fix production and investment, and they ask for credit, then production and occur in both sectors, firm 
firms higher, so there is employment dynamics. At the end of the period, the firm computes their profits, try to repay their debt, and in case they go bankrupt, also bank can go bankrupt and can have banking crisis. And then you have this exit and entry uh, phase. Um, technical change, we have the capital good firm invest in research and development to, to buy, to develop uh, machines that are cheaper and are much, that are more productive in the down one uh, sector, but they also can innovate their uh, competitors. The markets are characterized by imperfect competition, so this firm uh, send uh, imperfect uh, signals. Um, the, the consumption goods sector is, is where there is the Canadian part, so we have that this firm invest both to expand the capital stocks according to demand expectation, but at the same time, according to the evolution of the technology, they can replace the current level of uh, machine. Um, the consumption good market as well is characterized by imperfect competition and firm fixed uh, price according to a markup rule. And uh, uh, we have a banking sector where you have a heterogeneous bank that supply credit according to a kind of Basel uh, rule. And uh, uh, the credit demand comes from consumption good firm for production and investment <coughs> reasons. And you can have that uh, credit rationing endogenously uh, arise. Uh, why can, you have, can we have banking crisis in the model? We can have banking crisis because firms exit the market if they have a zero market share or they have negative profit that are so big that basically they eat all the net worth. In this case, this is a losses in the balance sheet of the, uh, of the bank. And if the balance sheet, this loss is so big, banks can start having negative profits and eventually having a negative net worth. In this case, there is a banking crisis, like for instance the one that we had in Europe in the last year, and you have the, the government that step in and uh, bail out the bank. But this creates a problem for the public budget because you, you can have that a banking crisis can create a sovereign debt uh, crisis, like the one we observed in Europe uh, some time ago. Um, the labor market is very stylized. You have a, a wage that is uh, fixed by institutional uh, mechanism, and you can have involuntary unemployment. And to close the model, you can compute in every time period uh, the deficit and of, the, of the government, which is basically given by taxes minus public expenditure minus the cost of saving the banks and the cost of financing the public debt. And the government just fix the tax rate and unemployment subsidy. Monetary policies perform according to a Taylor rule, that is, the, the central banks change the interest rate to take on both inflation and unemployment. And as you in a jump based model, you have that all macroeconomic uh, quantities can be derived, can be computed, starting by aggregating micro quantities. Um, the first exercise that we did with this model was to check whether this model are able to reproduce stylized fact or not, and to reproduce uh, the reality. So we check whether this agent based model are able to reproduce both macroeconomic stylized fact and macroeconomic uh, stylized fact. This is a kind of uh, comparison with uh, standard dynamic stochastic general equilibrium model. What we found in all the paper that we did is that the, uh, the K plus S model appeared to be quite successful in reproduce many macroeconomic stylized facts like endogenous growth, endogenous fluctuation. Uh, you can have the coexistence of mild fluctuation together with big crisis. You can match the co movement within variable, but at the same time, the model is successful in matching also the microeconomic stylized facts. And in principle, standard macroeconomic models like the SG are not able because they don't have heterogeneous uh, agents. Just to give you some idea, some plot, so you can see that kind of time series generated by the model, you have endogenous growth on, uh, on your right hand side, but also endogenous fluctuation, and you can have a, 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 the coexistence both of mild, long term, and crisis. Um, so, the first result that we got in our 2010 paper was that we found a strong complementarity between Keynesian and Schumpeterian policy. That is, you need Schumpeterian policy supporting innovation, but you need also Keynesian uh, policy as a necessary condition to have long-run economic growth. So, not only to stabilize the economy, but also to stabilize growth. In, a, in another paper in 2013, we find also a strong interaction between fiscal policy and inequality. That is, the higher the level of inequality in the economy and the more fiscal policy are needed to compensate for this uh, inequality. Then what we tried to, to do in the model was to study the effect of the type of fiscal policy that have been implemented in Europe. So we test the effect of 
the stability and growth pack of the fiscal compact. We also control for this possible uh, bond spread channel in for that people that believe in uh, uh, expansion and austerity uh, argue for. And we have two different types of monetary policy. There was a conservative Taylor rule, which was mimicking the, one, the type of monetary policy performed by the Bundesbank, or a dual mandate where it was much more in tune with the monetary policy performed by the Federal Reserve. So let me go just to, to, to the result. I just put the table, but they're not very important. What uh, I would like you, the, the take home message that I would like you to, to get is that if you go for austerity policy, which basically are in the line, what you observe is that this austerity policy led to higher economic uh, volatility. So the, com the economy is much, more, uh, is much more unstable. At the same time, this austerity policy also increased the likelihood of observing economic crisis. Then they also increased the unemployment uh, rate. And all these results are robust whether we control for the cost of uh, financing the public uh, debt. At the same time, what you observe is that these austerity policies are self-defeating. That is, they don't only increase unemployment and volatility, but they are not able to stabilize the public debt. So if you consider the, public, the dynamic of the public debt without or with uh, austerity policy, with austerity policy, is much more likely to observe uh, sovereign debt crisis. The other experiment, finally, that we, we did was to consider the impact of austerity policy on the long-run performance of the economy. And we matched the long-run performance of the economy considering the average GDP. And what we found is here, again, is that, and also uh, surprisingly, is that austerity policy also reduced the long-run performance of the economy. So it can be responsible for lower GDP performance in the long-run long for many countries. And uh, also here I put some uh, plot where I condition this austerity policy in terms of inequality. What we observe is that the effect of austerity policy becomes bigger and bigger, so stronger and stronger, the higher the level of economic inequality in the system. So the negative effect of austerity policy in terms of volatility, higher volatility, higher unemployment, uh, lower GDP growth rate, becomes bigger when inequality is increasing. So when the income distribution is more skewed, our profit vis-a-vis -vis, uh, wages. Uh, so what we did was to try to uh, explain, to uncover, to try to find uh, an explanation why this austerity policy were also affecting the long run beyond uh, the short term. So here I plot, uh, I, I present the plot of GDP, average productivity, total R&D expenditure, and the productivity of best businesses. And you can see uh, you can compare the baseline without austerity policy and the dashed line where you have kind of structural growth path uh, austerity policy. You can observe that in this case, typical time series is permanently lower than the one that you get without austerity policy. Why is that so? Well, basically because the productivity performance of the country is much lower. And this lower productivity performance depends because Capital good firms, which are supposed to invest in R&D and to innovate, invest less when these fiscal policies are, uh, are in place. So if you consider the productivity of the best machine, which is a kind of proxy for the technology, the frontier of technology of the economy, this is also uh, lower. So then, given that we can use an agent-based model, we went to check what happened at the firm level, both in the capital good sector and the consumption good sector, and we checked the performance of uh, the various uh, firms. Sorry, here I put some other statistics, but we can uh, <coughs> move on. So if, if you check uh, in the capital goods sector, what you observe is that when uh, austerity policies are in place, uh, capital goods firms are less successful in innovating. Indeed, the share of successful innovators is much lower. And this reflects in a lower productivity growth and also in a lower productivity dispersion. Why? Because as the firms are less innovative, they are much more closer over time. What is the mechanism inside? The mechanism basically comes from the fact that as the there is a lower demand because there are this austerity policy, uh, consumption good firms invest less in machines, so there is less investment at the aggregate level, and this lower level of investment provides less money to capital good firms to finance the R&D policy. Lower R&D policies then reflect in a lower innovation rate and a lower imitation rate. You can see the same uh, Kind, same kind of analysis you can perform at the consumption good level. And here we find indeed that it's not just a problem of lower innovator rate, 
but austerity policy are, are also reduced in the innovation diffusion within the economy. Again, for the same mechanism, lower aggregate demand uh, imply that uh, consumption good firm has less money to invest in a uh, new machine, and they also have uh, less business opportunity. And the fact that there is low down the investment rate also imply that the new machine spread, so the new technology spread in the economic system at a much lower pace, which also explains why the uh, diffusion of innovation is much lower uh, in this system. So, just to, to sum up, we employ this agent based model, the Keynes Plus Better model, to study the impact of austerity policy both on short term indicator but also in uh, long run performance, like average GDP or potential GDP. And we find that the result was that the kind of austerity policy that will be performed in Europe increased macroeconomic stability. These policies are self-defeating, so they're not able to stabilize public budget. Their impact is <laughs> higher, the higher the level of inequality, and they can also have a negative impact in the long-run performance of the economy because they reduce the innovation rate and the innovation diffusion in the system. So we are not come back to the initial plot, sorry the computer is quite slow. <coughs> so our model suggests that a possible way at least to compensate or to reduce, to narrow the gap between the Euro and the United States could be at least to stop, stop, to stop this uh, austerity policy to try at least to provide more, uh, to increase aggregate demand and to provide more resources for innovation creation, innovation diffusion.